so today's topic is about improving graphs so uh, last two topics we have been talking little bit about data science how to uh, massage data how to cut data how to find uh, uh, elements that uh, that do not exist in some data frames uh, uh, so uh, invalid data uh, and how to draw basic graphs and so forth so today we will cover most of why and what so how how to do that is i think you are getting the flavor of that already by looking at the documentation but we will cover why we should present data a certain way and what is it that we should be presenting it okay so let's uh, get started so uh, the the learning objectives would be that by end of this session you should be able to list and draw basic graph types you should be able to add information to graphs uh you should be able to beautify graphs you should be able to highlight your message on graphs okay so uh you it's one thing to just present the data it's another thing to uh basically um uh, find out what the mess message is and uh, highlight that for the audience okay and then you will be able to look at some of the uh advanced graph types okay and uh, then you will be able to decide between different types of graph like wh when to use what kind of graph okay so these are the objectives uh so most of it will be we will be covering graphs that are drawn on uh, on google sheets but then we will also have a practical session we will we will look at uh, uh python libraries to uh, implement some of this so let's get started so the basic graph types you already know so this is a bar graph uh in bar graph you are basically showing information as bars okay and uh, this uh, information uh, basically your uh, uh, y axis that you have shows the quantity that you have so it uh, higher means more lower you can even actually go negative and your x axis will show the independent variable so here uh, you can have an independent variable that is categorical categorical uh, as in that if you look at india south africa pakistan australia these are cricket teams uh, so these may not be there is no like fixed order in them so you can just put them on the x axis uh, you can also have uh, ordinal data here so let's say if you have numerical data if you have a time series you can also show that by graph uh, by using a bar graph and uh, as you have already seen you can actually have multiple graphs that capture multiple metrics so here for example we can look at icc point score this is just hypothetical data of uh, t20 as well as one day internationals for four cricket playing nations now let's uh, look at the next type of graph which is a line graph and uh, the thing with line graph is that here many people i have seen they make mistakes okay uh they make mistake where x axis is sometimes categorical variable so when you have a line there is a strict order and usually it is a temporal order or a spatial order spatial means in space and temporal means in time so make sure that your line graphs have nothing but temporal order in the x axis so y axis here what i have not shown so there was a question in the chat what is on the y axis so what uh, so i did not capture what is on the y axis because uh, it's captured in the title points scored by various countries and here in in this particular one it is points scored by india okay so here we have it shows that how the performance is changing year over year so the temporal order is there in the x axis uh the next graph type that you are already familiar with is a pie chart and pie chart basically shows you proportions of different things that make a whole so let's say we are looking at traffic at bikola junction and we count the number of vehicles different types of vehicles that cross that junction during a typical day we see that a two wheelers form 34% uh, trucks form around 11% cars form around 33% and buses form around 22% of the traffic at this particular junction so what you can do is so it's very visual it shows you the proportions in a very visual way Yeah, as part of a circle what you can also do is you can 
uh, instead of showing percentages, you can actually show the actual numbers because percentages are visually very clear in this case. So, uh, and the next basic type of graph is a scatter plot where you have uh, two different uh, metrics that are on two different axes. Usually these metrics are both, uh, they are both uh, numerical. Uh, that's why, uh, that's usually what scatter is used for. It is not used for a categorical variable. Neither of the two, neither X axis nor the Y axis is a categorical variable. So here it says, T20 performance versus one day performance of let's say some country, India, let's say. So uh, uh, usually what you say is that Y versus X. So uh, the dependent variable usually you uh, state earlier and then you uh, state the uh, independent variable. So X axis would be the one day performance and Y axis would be T20 performance. So these are the basic types of graphs. Let's see if there are any questions before I move to the next section, which is adding information to graphs. Temporal order. So question is, what is temporal order? Temporal order means there's a, some time stamp. One comes after another. So for example, uh, it could be years, it could be minutes, it could be uh, something like a time series. It could be, uh, but you can also use it for things like histogram where there's an order of the variable, right? So X axis has an order. Uh, Ame, do you have a question? Here, do you have a question? No, sir. Okay, then please uh, keep yourself muted. All right, thank you. So it looks like, uh, uh, so one question is principal difference between usage of line plot and scatter plot. So the difference between line plot and scatter plot is that in line plot, you are actually seeing the trend vary up and down in uh, as the temporal order on the x-axis changes. Whereas in scatter plot, it need not have a temporal order on the x-axis. It could be any order on the x-axis. And you don't really want to join. You don't really want to see it as a series, but you actually see it as separate numbers. Okay, so then you use a scatter plot as opposed to a uh, time series plot. Okay, let's move on. We have a lot to cover. So these basic ones you already know. Let's move on to uh how to add information okay one last question how to decide which plot will give you best representation for the data hopefully this uh, entire uh lecture will help you answer that uh so what i mentioned earlier bar graph uh, usually you would have uh, categorical variables on x-axis uh, line graph you would have temporal variables on the x-axis scatter plot you would have two variables whose relation you are trying to study etc all right, next, uh, let's start to go to the next uh, section, which is adding information to the graphs. Now, if you look at this in this scatter plot between two variables, it doesn't really tell you much unless there's a title. So many times adding a title is really necessary, especially in formal writing, when you're writing a paper or a report, then adding a title is necessary to tell you what the graph is about. Okay, so here now look at the difference. So now we have added a title and that title basically tells you pretty much everything. Audience versus critic score. So audience scores is on the Y axis, critic score is on the X axis. Okay. So this is telling you, uh, but we don't know what, what each dot is. So probably the complete title would be audience versus critic score for the top most watched movies on Netflix or something along those lines, right? So that would give you the complete information. Uh, now let's look at the next information you can add. That is the axis title. So here there is no axis title. We don't know what is X axis or what is Y axis. Uh, so what we can do is we can add the titles. And then what we see is that X, X axis is critic score and Y axis is audience score. So now it is pretty clear what these numbers represent. So these uh, scores are uh, in the range of uh, zero to hundred for both of these. Kasina, what's your question? Uh, yes, sir. So, sir, in the scatter plot, yes. uh, basically saying uh, like the relation between critic score to the audience score, can you say that? Yeah, so I will come to that. That is basically you can add trend line to see whether they're correlated or not. Okay, so, okay, fine. 
will cover right so here for example you can see there's a they uh, do you see my cursor yes i do okay so uh, yeah with pointer probably it's better you can see that there is probably a line that is going like this so since yeah, the yeah. slope of the line is positive then these two are positively correlated okay if they are almost like a ball like either elongated either a circular ball or an elliptical ball where the uh, major axis or minor axis is along the vertical or the horizontal then there is no relation but as long as it is an elliptical ball where the major axis is uh, is tilted then there is a relation so so uh, like just plotting the scatter plot uh, what can we infer just from this not using you are not seeing for any pattern or anything right so just uh, looking at this we, we we infer that it looks like they are correlated okay so as the critic score go up on an average the audience score also goes up that's what i can say all right so what each dot represents that we haven't explained uh, so that is a missing information in this graph that can be added maybe in the title for the most watched movies in 2020 or 2019 on netflix something like that you can add uh, what what each point can infer so each point tells you so let's say if i look at this particular point this tells me that for this movie the audience score was high but critic score was not that high so that means it is probably more of a not so artsy movie but more of a uh, popular movie so this could be something like a avengers movie or something right on the other hand you can have certain ones where uh, uh, critic score is very high but the audience score is not very high so this particular one where my dot is here the audience score is low but critic score is very high so this is probably a very artsy movie which a lot of uh, lay public maybe didn't like very much okay all right so now let's move forward so you can also add units to the axis right now uh, when we are comparing two metrics uh, there is no units that are added but uh, here uh, you can uh, so here it is pretty obvious that it is rating but let's say if it was something else kilograms or decibels or something then you would also add the the units on the axis and you would add these numbers on the axis okay so that is very important so that uh, some numerical uh, inferences can be made okay the other thing you can add is grid lines right so these grid lines basically let's say you are looking at this y axis and on these y axis for each of these major uh, divisions you have a horizontal line so care must be taken not to go overboard with grid lines otherwise they look very ugly they should be sparse and clean and hopefully very light okay let's look at a few questions so the question says uh, what is the difference between line and plot i think that we covered can you provide any example of a scatter plot we just showed you uh, critic score versus uh, audience score for each movie uh, suppose you have y is equal to 2x and then if x is increasing y will also increase yes uh, so they are directly proportional positive means they are uh, positive correlation means that when one increases the other also increases negative correlation means when one increases the other decreases okay all right now let's look at uh, more information that you can add one thing to add is this legend okay so if you have two different series and it is not obvious which one is t20 which one is one day so you might want to add this information which is which tells you which color is uh, represents which particular metric okay so that is very important all right and then there is another thing you can add which is called error bars so what error bars are basically it tells you if there is a uh, there's a, some uncertainty in the numbers that we have uh, that we have uh, displayed so for example let's say we estimated a number of bears and dolphins in a particular area but we use satellite imagery for that right so satellite imagery does not actually go and count each and each and every individual animal so what we can say is that we know that from our process that there is a chance of a variance around a particular value so if you look at for example uh this particular value in 2012 in, in 2012 we saw 54 bears but there is a chance that there is a plus minus 2 error that we made 
because of our imperfect technology or imperfect methods to count the bears. So we show this as an error bar above and below the value. So other thing to note about this is that look at how clean and beautiful this graph is. It doesn't require an, a Y axis. It doesn't require any units on the Y axis because hopefully these numbers are interpretable directly as it is. The numbers are just shown on the bars and it doesn't even require an X axis. So sometimes minimal minimalistic graphs look very pretty. So that is another message which I'm jumping ahead in the beautifying section I will show you. Minimalistic is sometimes beautiful, but you have to figure out, you have to uh, exercise your brain to find out what is it that I want to show in a minimalistic manner. Tanvi, you have a question? Hello, sir, yes. am I audible? Yes. So these, bar that, these bars that are visible on the dolphins are uh, have a greater length than what uh, we can see in bears. So the, uh, uh, the lesser the uh, data we have, the lesser the data we matlab jo inke bars hai jo matlab jin jin bhi data zyada yani ki 150 is to 8 hai to 150 wale mein jo uska bar ka length it is greater and in case of in case of bears it is lesser so jitna kam data hoga utna kam estimation hoga nahi nahi so the basically the point is that if you if the data is less then the chance of error is also less if you if you if your algorithm counted 150 dolphins then the chance is plus minus let's say 10 percent if you counted only eight bears then the chance plus minus uh, uh, 10 percent is only one extra bear or one less bear whereas in dolphins it is 15 extra dolphins or 15 less dolphins okay so, thank so, you. so that's why usually your error bars go up they become broader when you have uh, more uh, uh, when when you have larger estimates, let's look at some of the chat questions. Uh, bar graph versus grid line. So yes, so in bar graphs you can add grid lines because that shows you exactly where the y-axis units where they go onto the graph onto the graph so that you can compare the height of the bar with the grid line. What is the difference between the two? Like uh, bar graph used for comparison and. Uh, and seems like kind of grid, same as grid lines. I didn't understand this question. Maybe Hitesh, can you repeat this question? Sir, I mean that uh, uh, in the slides, both seem kind of kind of same, like the grid lines and bar graph. So someone in the chat clarified that actually grid lines are a part of bar graph. So is it so? Right, right. So, so let me let me go back. Let me, uh, so if you look at, uh, uh, let's uh, go back to a slide or two, right? Yes. So this particular graph has no grid lines, but it does not need grid lines because the numbers are right there on the graph. 8, 150, 54, 77, 93, 32, 116, etc. So if you actually show the data labels as the values, the actual values, then you don't need grid lines. You don't need both. Okay. Now okay, Compare this to the previous graph. Let's say this one, right? So here, if I look at this uh, particular value, I don't know what exactly this value is uh, in relation to 140 and 160. So therefore, I drew these uh, horizontal lines, which are called grid lines. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Now, if you look at scatter plots or if you look at line graphs, you can also have vertical grid lines. Okay, so for different categories. Uh, Tanvi, your question? Tanvi, you have a question? No, there is no question. Sorry, I, I, I forgot. Okay. Ram Mohan? Yes, sir. Sir, can you go back to the error bars? Yes. Sir, in this, I wanted to know the, the length of this error bar. Is it fixed like, uh, like, uh, like you said, uh, plus variance and minus variance? And if so, sir, um, sir, usually we do that um, with respect to the mean. So I wanted to know how is this uh, related here? Is this 150 a mean or something? Or that's why we are able to do this or not? Or is it something else? Yes, you can consider 150 as mean, let's say mean observation by three different people who saw dolphins on for who counted dolphins in 2011. Okay, sir. And, okay, and so uh, size is plus minus variance? It could be plus minus variance, yes. So it depends on what is the standard practice 
for that particular venue where you are showing the graph. Okay. Some people, when they don't have variance, they will just show that as historically we think that there is a plus minus 10% error. So whatever it is, we will add plus minus 10%. Some people actually go and measure the variance and then add the variance. Okay, sir. thank you. So it all depends. Some people would show, let's say 25th percentile on the bottom and the uh, not, sorry, not percentile. So that would be for the box and whiskers plot, but something along that line, 25th uh, conf percentile confidence interval, and then uh, plus 75, plus 25 percent and minus 25 percent confidence interval, something along those lines. Or they would show like a 95 percent confidence interval uh, above and below the actual measurement. Let's look at some chat questions. Can you show histogram? Uh, and corresponding error bars in a single graph alongside. Yes, you can. Uh, uh, so in histogram also, so histograms, usually we think of histograms as something that is fixed. But when you go to Bayesian methods, even histograms are not fixed. They also have a confidence interval around them. But usually you don't show error bars on histograms. So uh, Harsh is right in that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Yash, uh, thank you for the correction. It is plus minus standard deviation, not plus minus variance. Is it possible to show grid lines at some special points like intersection that we think are important? So if you show grid lines at some special uh, horizontal line, let's say. So let's say some horizontal line which was supposed to be expected number or something. Then it is not called a grid line, but you can definitely show horizontal lines. I'll come to that in highlighting, when I come to highlighting portion. Okay. Let's move forward. Right. So uh, this uh, we haven't shown uh, here, but what you can show, do is that uh, if you have, uh, let me go back to this one, uh, this uh, line series, right? So if, sorry, if in a time series, you have particular lines in, in a line graph, but the actual value is variable around that plus minus something, then you can show a positive and a negative uh, fuzzy region around it, which is called confidence interval. Okay, so that slide uh, uh, we should have added. Uh, so it is like an error bar, but except it is a continuous envelope around the central line. Okay, now we are coming to the third section, which is beautifying graphs. So if you look at this graph, what comes to your mind? Can you read very easily what, I, what is on the x-axis, what is on the y-axis? Sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. Sometimes when we just export graphs from Python or from whatever program, we use the default font size that is given to us and it may not be legible in a report. So legibility is the number one thing that you should worry about when you are preparing graphs and putting it on a report, okay? So now compare this to this graph where I have increased the font size and look how the numbers pop out and how uh, good it looks uh, because it can be read from the back of the room when you're making the presentation. Okay, so always worry about legibility of fonts, never skimp on the font size, but don't make it too large that it looks ugly. Okay, so there's some happy middle. Uh, if you don't know what the happy middle is, then uh, get opinion of a friend not a colleague. Please repeat confidence interval. So confidence interval is like error bar, except that it is not at a fixed point. It is like an envelope that goes along a line, uh, above a line and a below a line. You will see two other separate lines that will form the confidence interval around that line. Okay. So legibility of fonts is the number one thing you should worry about when you're talking about beautifying your graph once you have made the graph. Okay. Let's look at another slide. Do you see the slide? It's loading on my screen for some reason. It's loading. Okay. Let's wait. Where is it? Yeah, this is what I wanted to show. Let's present.
just give me a second let me also download it as a pdf it gives me problems earlier later okay so now if you look at this graph you will see that i have used four different fonts one for the title one for the y axis one for the x axis and one for the legend so never go fancy with the fonts that's not never good practice legibility is your number one we should be your number one concern and consistency so use consistent font let me show you how beautiful it looks when the fonts are consistent now look at the one on the right with consistent fonts it looks much more professional than the one on the left okay so we have two two bars one which is for t20 performance and the other is one day performance for that particular country in 2015 let's say it's all fictitious data okay how about uh, let's look at this line graph so this is india's performance in the last few years and look at how uh, what do you think about this particular uh, slide you can see everything there is a good grid which is on x axis and y axis but it is too busy in my opinion in my opinion simplicity usually helps in identifying trends for the for your audience much better so compare it to this one where i have gotten rid of the gray background i have gotten rid of the y uh, the x axis grid grid lines the vertical grid lines and i have just retained the uh, the horizontal grid lines and it looks much cleaner and much more professional okay so this is something that one of my uh, managers in a company uh, told me that increase information to ink ratio information should be more than the ink used okay let's look at another example of how to draw the same graph so here look at this i have removed even the horizontal grid lines now that you can get away with that if exact value of the series is not important only the trend is important only the visual trend is important then i don't need the horizontal grid lines either if the numbers are important then i have another option i can get rid of the lines and just have the numbers as data labels these are called data labels the 89 92 this 89 92 81 63 63 etc these are called data labels so you can have data labels as values for example okay let's take a few questions is there any relation between error bar and confidence interval they are roughly the same except that error bar are on one bar each error bar is on one bar confidence interval is the same thing which is above and below but on a and and when up around a line okay so like manan said confidence uh, in interval is sort of like a continuous error bar around a region all right any other questions yes prasoon uh, sir what is the major difference uh, between a histogram and a bar graph like apart from the spaces between the bars what are what is are the major difference so histogram is basically a uh, histogram is a frequency count whereas okay. bar graph can a histogram can be represented as a bar graph but bar graph can represent any metric on the y axis it doesn't need to be a frequency count in this particular case it was icc points for that particular cricket team okay okay so it doesn't need to be frequency okay okay thank you sir kasina sir uh, my question is regarding the error bar yeah uh, so the error bar uh, where we calculate the standard deviation right is it calculated around the top point of the graph which you showed earlier is it calculated around the top point it is calculated for each point separately okay yeah so for each bar you will calculate it separately that's why the the height will vary for each bar yeah i mean to say for uh, each bar it is evaluated at the topmost point is so it so top point topmost point is the data point there is no middle point yeah fine okay okay Alright. So now let's look at other ways of beautifying your graph. 
consider adding color to your graph so let's say now we are looking at four teams india new zealand pakistan and west indies and we are comparing their t20 performance in 2015 so here it is difficult to find any team because you have to actually go and read but now let's say if i add some color based on the team color so india wears blue new zealand wears black pakistan wears green and uh, west indies wears crimson so now uh, you see how easy it is to actually quickly find where is west indies where is pakistan where is uh, india where is uh, new zealand right and then i probably don't even need horizontal lines and and uh, uh, y axis uh, plot if i if i put the numbers right there on the bar okay it can be above the bar it can be inside the bar but somewhere along where you can quickly find it okay so between the two uh, it, i would prefer the one on the right there are no right or wrong methods in graphs but there are some this is a very qualitative field in that sense but we will show you by the end of the lecture that some tools of how to get these effect okay now i said use color but let, now let me show you what ha, what goes wrong when you use color so sometimes using color is not a good advice here you look at india australia pakistan and south africa pakistan and south africa both have green color so it becomes a clashing to the eye australia is yellow yellow on white white background is clashing to the eye so in that case you don't want to use color okay in that case you would prefer not to use color in fact you would use the boring old same color for all four uh, teams but you may want to do some ordering so here the x axis is ordered in alphabetical order so now at least it's if you had a large number of categories on the x axis it would be easy to find because it is alphabetically ordered okay don't leave it unordered okay so be cognizant of what information you are putting on the sheet and how much cognitive burden you are putting on the reader you should reduce the reader's cognitive burden so at least do some sorting so that they can easily find the information okay so now let's talk about sorting so again we go back to that color bar india new zealand pakistan west indies but now let's see if i reorder it in the decreasing order of of the uh, of of their scores okay their performance so now it looks much prettier because you have a natural order among the teams so you can order, either do it alphabetically or you can do it in the order of the metric <clears throat> but don't leave it unordered any questions can we have uh, lecture notes in github re repo i just sent an email to everyone with the lecture notes uh, manan can we remove x we can remove x axis if so i'm sorry can I'll... we remove x axis and insert a legend we can remove x axis and insert a legend but x axis is more natural place to for a person to look to find information okay sir otherwise you will have to first look at the bar and then you will have to look at the legend to figure out what is that bar okay so you you can use legend legend is something to be used but the natural place to find the name of the team is right below the bar okay all right so here there are two different sorting so uh, one uh, so let's say we are looking at job satisfaction of different uh, jobs so we have accountant civil service com company cxo company entry level farmer and teacher so the left one is ordered the uh, this is called a this is not a bar chart this is called a uh, column chart so basically it's just a 90 degree rotated version uh, the reason we do that is sometimes this looks prettier than the vertical bars uh so here what you can see is in the left hand side all the professions are uh, are uh, ordered by alphabetical order on the right hand side they are ordered by uh, uh by the job satisfaction the higher job satisfaction is towards the top lower job satisfaction is towards the bottom now which one to use 
uh, that really depends on what your goal is, right? So if your goal is to look at only the top few job satisfaction or the bottom few job satisfaction, then the graph on the right is is better. If your goal is to document fifty different jobs and you don't care about uh, where you know which one you are uh, you are examining, then it is better to order them alphabetically so that it is easy for anyone to find the information. Let's look at some questions. Any preference on which order to use? I just answered that question. So it looks prettier when it is ascending order or descending order. Sorry, uh, alphabetical is uh, usually uh, depends on the requirement. Uh, uh, so if you if you are documenting things and there you are not like trying to show which ones are at the top, then it is better to do it alphabetically. Okay. So why rotate it 90 degrees as opposed to show it as bar? Sometimes these names are very long, and it looks prettier by rotating it 90 degrees like this. Show horizontal bars instead of vertical bars. And also, if let's say there are a lot of categories, then it is better to show it as horizontal bars. It looks prettier. Okay. Now let's look at uh, how you can highlight information. We are on the fourth section now. About highlighting information. So let's look at this graph. India's performance in last few years for T uh, twenty and one day. So if you look at this, there is a strange dip in two thousand eighteen, right? So naturally, someone will be curious about why that dip is, right? So you can actually highlight and you can change the headline. The headline need not be very dry and uh, boring. You can add some color to the headline. By giving your information, your interpretation in the headline. So here it says India's performance dipped when Tendulkar retired, and then I have highlighted when Tendulkar retired. Okay. So this graph, especially in companies, not in academic settings, but in companies, these are much more preferred because you are not just supposed to present your data; you are supposed to interpret the data also. So you have added this orange box. That calls out the natural question: Why India's performance dipped in 2018? And then you have answered it in the headline itself. So in the chart title itself, you have answered it. Let's look at another way of looking at it. So you can actually even have a call out box, call outs and pointers where you can say Tendulkar retired, and that explains pretty much everything. What happened in 2018? Okay. So you can highlight different information by. Using callouts, use by using boxes, by using a vertical line. So someone asks, can we have special grid lines? You won't call it a grid line, but you can actually have a vertical line here instead of. So if you go back here, you need not have a box. You can just have a vertical line here, and then you can say that's when Tendulkar retired. Okay. You can also use color to highlight. So for example. Let's say we are interested in uh, this is a report about civil service. Why people are not able to do their best in civil service, or something, or uh, along those lines, or should we increase the 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 pay of civil servants, right? So we have compared it to other professions, and we can see that civil service is doing pretty well in terms of job satisfaction. You can actually highlight it by changing the color of the subject that you are talking about, even though you are comparing it to other things. So here the information stands out right away because otherwise we don't know whether it is it is not in the top but it is among the top few. So it completely like it pops out that this is what we are talking about. So don't be shy to highlight information when you are when you want to make a particular point and when you are talking about a particular subject. Questions? Questions from YouTube chat. Can anyone please tell me where to submit assignments due to some problems? I am late. So there is a spreadsheet. I I request the TAs to keep the spreadsheet open for a little bit longer, even though uh, we have a deadline. Are the call uh, so next question, sir? Legibility of font versus consistency of, of font in the report, which is more important? I think both are equally important. Legibility legibility is higher than consistency, but you can make it both legible and consistent so don't neglect consistency either because if it is not legible then people will miss the point okay 
here here's another way to highlight a chart highlight a particular information so i can put a dry uh, headline such as traffic break up in bicola junction okay but let's say i want to make a particular point about two wheelers okay so what i can do is i can show it in slightly more interesting way this is a 3d don't go overboard with 3d it should not look like a cartoon it should not look like unprofessional uh, high school student just discovered all these features about ms excel or or google sheets or something uh, that they have gone overboard with different colors and different 3d effects and so forth just do it in a in slightly muted manner but don't be shy to use some effects so here i have used some 3d effect and i have used an effect which breaks away the information that i want to talk about which is two wheelers two wheelers form bulk of the bulk of traffic at bicola junction and now it completely pops out that this is what i'm talking about let's look at uh, i think there was a hand that was raised hitesh what is your question sir my question is regarding call outs and pointers sir what if there are a lot of call outs and pointers in our chart so what should be done it will means like make the chart look very messy yes don't go overboard with call outs and pointers if there are too many of them then don't use them at all okay, you should sir. not have more than one or two okay okay all right so histograms everyone knows about so let's say you have different run times and this is the frequency of run times so now we are in the uh, fifth section of the presentation which is advanced graph this is the longest portion of the presentation i will go through many different types of graphs okay so histogram you are already aware it's it's like a bar graph but uh, it looks like a complete uh, uh, probability distribution or a frequency distribution let's look at something else which is stacked bar okay so let's say we are looking at uh, uh, let's say satisfaction with a particular hotel right and x axis is the satisfaction or the points given in a survey right and uh, let's look at uh, uh, what is that uh, or, or so let's say the total number of people that came to this particular hotel right so uh, and we want to show two different types of people and we also want to show them as a whole so you can stack the stairs and levers on top of each other for example so you have uh, uh, business and these are all business travelers those who travel rarely those who travel frequently and those who have travel are traveling for leisure and uh, they are uh, you are talking about both the those who stayed at the hotel and those who are leaving at the hotel and if you want to show this as a percent you can also use something called 100% stack bar what that means is you are not showing actual numbers you are actually showing them as a, as percentages uh, where every all bars go up to 100% what you can do is if you want to also show the numbers you can use data labels here you can actually put the number 125 75 etc inside the boxes so that the actual numbers are also available but the more info visual information is the proportion as opposed to the numbers in this particular case okay questions why is frequency why, yeah why is count in histogram that's correct all right let's look at another type of graph so column chart i already covered it's 90 degrees rotated and it is used when you usually have a lot of categories to cover and or if the names of the categories are too long okay, let's look at another type of chart area chart so area chart is like a line chart except that below that below the line you show an area that is that is colored and it is usually done to compare histograms or to com to show proportions and so forth sometimes it looks prettier than a line and it conveys better information than a line usually you want to show something that is like a uh, like something that is below the line All, histograms are best shown using uh, area charts uh then cumulative distribution so this uh, a couple of people had questions about what is a cumulative distribution so now let's look at the graph on the left this is a gaussian distribution and you are familiar with probability distribution this mean is around 0 okay and uh, then there is a particular variance which is plus minus uh, here the variance is 1 and the gaussian has a typical bell curve okay so now if i want to compute its cumulative distribution and i want to find out what is the cumulative distribution at 
I want to find out what is the probability of the variable taking value less than one from minus infinity all the way up to one. So for that, what I'll do is I'll run an integral from minus infinity to the point x, which is one here. So that value of that integral, I will plot here at one, and this is what I will get. Okay. So if I integrate the curve on the left, I will get an S-shaped curve on the right. If I differentiate the S-shaped curve on the right, I will get the uh, curve on the left. Oops. Sorry. Uh, so here, uh, the thing to note about cumulative distribution is that it always goes from zero to plus one and it is always non-decreasing. So it will always keep increasing or stay the same as you go towards the right. It will go from zero to one. So sometimes it is easier to compare two different variables or two different metrics by looking at cumulative distributions as opposed to the uh, uh, the probability distribution. So here, this is an example from a paper. You are looking at uh, performance of some proposed technique, which is red, and you are looking at the, or the localization error. You are looking at localization of other techniques, which is in the black and the pink. And what you see that the red one, the localization error uh, is almost never above this 0.5. Whereas for the other techniques, the localization error is never below 0.6 or below one. So obviously this, red technique is better than the black and the and the pink but it is not as good as the blue technique okay another advanced type of graph is to show two quantities two different units on the same graph so this is important and usually this is only done when you have a temporal axis or some sort of an order on the x axis so here let's say i want to show uh, so for some com for a company i want to show its income okay and i want to show its uh, revenue okay obviously revenue is higher the blue bar is higher and the income which is profit is lower okay so both revenue is growing okay which is uh, the blue bars are growing and uh, the uh, the profits are also growing which is the red bars and these are all in terms of uh dollars right millions of dollars so you can see that the units here are in millions of usd so it is not just 25 uh uh thousand uh, uh dollars but it is 25000 millions millions of dollars which is 25 billion dollars so what you can see here is that uh, the the bars have this unit but then i want to also show why it is growing fast why is the uh the profit growing, uh, so I want to show the profit margin also. Now remember profit margin is a percent and I can now show it as a line. I wouldn't show it as a, as a bar because that will confuse the heck out of people because I've already shown two bars that are in dollars. So I want to now show a line which is in percentage and because it is in percentage, I want a separate unit and that unit I can use on the right side. Usually you scale the right side such that some particular value 20 percent uh, also shares the same grid line as some particular value here if this 20 percent was like somewhere else and its line was like not aligned with 100 this 100000 then it would look ugly so scale your secondary axis so so that its units its divisions match the divisions of the left axis and then it doesn't matter whether this line is here or this line is above or this line is below as long as this line is there and then the uh, the the grid lines can be shared between the primary y axis and the secondary y axis is this clear this is a more difficult uh, concept to get hitesh what is your question sir uh, in the particular bar and line chart sir do you mean that both the y axis should be kind of proportional like uh, they, it should be no, the no, same proportion not. No, 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 they need not be the same proportion, but whether you, you use zero to 20% or zero to 25% or zero to 30%, that should depend on how many divisions you had on the primary y-axis so that you can have uh, the same number of divisions and you don't need to insert extra grid lines for the secondary y-axis. The okay, grid so line should be shared between the two. 
sir means that the number of like uh, the total number like here are five parameters for uh, zero from zero dollar to one hundred thousand dollar. Yes. So same, it should be like five on the other yes. side also. So there are four divisions on the primary y-axis. There are four divisions on the secondary y-axis. That's how I want to use it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So Jay, sir, I did not get the this concept. So this concept is that the bars use the left y-axis and the line uses the right y-axis. It doesn't, the, the line, the yellow line, the orange line is not to be read in dollars. It has to be read in percentage. Does that make sense? So does, does that make it complicated? It makes it complicated, but it tells you the relation very quickly between the income, between the revenue and the profit margin. That your right, that your income is probably yeah. coming because of the profit increasing profit margin. Oh, okay. Is there any relation between the two y axis? Uh, so the relation, there is no relation. We are trying to show two different metrics that have two different units. So we, we are showing actually three different metrics revenue and net income share the same unit, and profit margin shares a separate unit. Okay, so when you are trying to show two separate units, then you can use this uh, concept. Let's look at some other question. So let's say if the maximum profit is thousand, then we map uh, 100 uh, with the, so that we don't have any, we don't, and yeah. So uh, Rishikesh, yes, the basic idea is that they should share grid lines. The left y-axis and the right y-axis should share the grid lines. Basically, that's the whole idea. Uh, donut chart is nothing but it's like a pie chart, but with a hole in the middle. So nothing fancy, just looks pretty sometimes. Okay. This is a slightly uh, advanced version of a pie chart. So here I have colored, I don't know if you find this ugly or beautiful, but uh, I try to color the, the different parts of the pie based on the color of the fruit itself. So I took, uh, I went against my advice of using yellow, but I went went ahead and used yellow anyway. But anyway, so let's say maybe you could do it with prettier colors. But I have, I show how many fruits were sold in, in particular store in uh, March 2020. And I show apples, oranges, grapes, bananas, and mangoes. And then I'm interested in breaking apple down further into different types of apple, red, pink, and golden apple. So then I can show something like this. So this is called a pie and a stack chart. You can also have it the other way. You can actually have First, a stack chart and break out one of the one of the stacks into a pie. You can do other way around, around also. Okay, so it's proportion of a proportion. Okay. All right, bubble chart. Bubble chart basically is trying to show you three different things. Where the third thing is usually a size. Okay, size or frequency or. Uh, or uh, something along those lines, right? So here we are showing, this is a data taken from Wikipedia. I made this chart in Excel. Uh, this is also available, I think in, uh, in Google Sheets and uh, probably in some of the Python libraries. What I'm trying to show is how does life expectancy increase uh, when the income of the country, per, per capita income of the country, income itself is not a good metric because you want to know how good is one person's uh, well-being. So you are showing income per capita in dollar PPP. PPP is uh, uh, purchasing power parity. Okay. So any guesses what is the size of the ball? Each ball is a country. So if you guess that the size of the ball is a population, then you are correct. The blue one is China. The red, sorry, the big blue, blue ball is China. The big red ball is India. And there's a very nice presentation by Hans Rosling, who who gives a lot of good presentations on development economics. And uh, this is an idea that I, uh, that many people, including myself, got from his presentation. I encourage you to look up Hans Rosling on YouTube and watch some of his presentations, how he makes data come alive uh, using different types of graphs. And then the line shows the trend line, which is basically based on linear regression of these two points. Uh, so it is the linear relationship between uh, life expectancy and, and income. You can see there are some outliers. So for example, this is US. US has very high income, but its life expectancy is below the expected value. It is below the line. 
and then there are some countries that do very good on healthcare even though they have low income they do much better than their expected value in life expectancy because they probably invested in healthcare for example cuba hitesh sir as in the bubble chart uh, nowhere it is mentioned that which countries which it is just the estimate of population the more the population bigger the country yes so yes. we uh. can conclude that uh, it is just gives a idea about the uh, the population means based just on the population of the country because we have nowhere named the countries so yeah, yeah. This, what bubble chart is like we need not name the countries no ideally that. ideally you should name the country ideally you should probably have a legend where you have where you name the country okay. but then it can become very crowded because there are 200 countries so means the main like the main purpose for creating a bubble chart is that we have to show the uh, life expense uh, life expense uh, versus income sir based on the population of that particular country like population of various countries and not uh, no, on the country so actually, no 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 so here we are showing lex life expectancy versus income that's what we are showing what the size okay. of the bubble shows is how significant is that data point if i see a tiny dot which is either very high or very low below the line or above the line then i can safely ignore it as an outlier but if i have a very big country that is an outlier then i want to study what it did because it is relevant to a lot of other countries okay so okay. it shows you the significance of the point yashasvi am i audible yes uh, yeah so isn't the life expectancy a temporal value and should it not be on the x axis life expectancy uh, i mean so it is a temporal order in some sense but it is actually just an ordered variable just like income and here i'm showing this as a dependent variable right okay. so yeah. if someone's life expectancy is more are they earning more or is it the other way around they are more earning more that's why their life expectancy is more right so okay. th that is the that is the question right so here we assume that the causal effect goes from income affects life expectancy Okay, let's take some chat questions. Uh, questions from uh, from YouTube chat. Is the area chart uh, fill between? Is area chart like fill between functions? Yes. In stack chart for stairs, zero value will be maximum of lever levers value. Uh, stairs value. So so basically, it's the total number that is showing in the stack, one above the other. how is the area graph better and what does it show uh, differently so area graph is just a different visual it is i wouldn't call it better per se it depends on the context in some context it is better when it is showing some sort of a, a histogram of some sort like a, a where you have a continuous variable on the x axis then it looks better um you should know which axis is giving what info right exactly or we can have we can use the legend for that also can you please explain uh, example on the right side of the cdf once again so basically it was just showing you two several different cdfs some cdf rose for earlier that means their mean and their 90th and 99th percentile are are much to the left of the zero uh, first percentile and the 50th percentile of the cdfs that are on the right side shouldn't we avoid using the same colors for two different objects in the pie chart yes ideally we should avoid that uh, is area chart like a fill between functions in matplotlib i am not sure we can look at matplotlib what it has income per capita actually considers population too so therefore size of the bubble is irrelevant not exactly because uh, there are some smaller countries uh, they tend to have a lot of variance because you can get like a a single family or a single uh, single leader that can actually make or break the country larger countries are more uh, they are more dependent on systems that are put in place as opposed to individuals uh, what is the name of the person for whom by uh, so the name of the person is hans rosling let me put it for everyone to see hans rosling okay uh yeah thanks harsh you also answered it life expectancy is in temporal we looked at that aren't we also able to find the relationship of 
per capita income and like uh, with population using this yeah we can but it is difficult to scratch your head and see what is the relation between size of the bubble and the life expectancy yeah so gap minder is the yes thanks joydeep gap minder is the website that you you should look at okay let's look at another type of graph this is called a survival curve or a kaplan meier curve so what we have in this particular curve uh, so what you have on x axis is time and what you have on y axis is survival probability so let's look at let's say you are looking at a particular car right so the car will have 100% survival probability uh, when you just buy the car but as the months go along the probability of failure of the car means that at any particular point let's say the probability of that car still being on the road is 75% and so forth and it keeps going down so here this is something more sinister than car this is survival of cancer patients breast cancer patients from one of our papers what we are showing is that there are different types of cancer patients based on their genomic make makeup those that have purely luminal lay breast cancer they have usually have higher life uh, survival probability than those that have heterogeneous breast cancer they they tend to survive uh, lower when you go towards the right so towards the extreme right everyone has zero survival probability to the extreme left which is zero you will have everyone will have one survival probability okay and then there is something called censoring so some people you don't follow up with them so you don't know whether they are alive or dead so there is a different way of showing that so i won't get into that but you can look it up so jay you have a question sir how can a survival of a car be 100% when it is new if a car is defective then how can it be 100% uh it's just an assumption here we are looking at cancer patients where let's say all of them were alive that's why they were patient at that time not a funeral i'm talking about the car car uh, in general when you buy it 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 dries off the uh, it dries out of the showroom right so i assume it's under assuming the model is not defective yes yes assuming so yeah, it's yeah. possible oh. that for some it starts below 100% oh. but in general it is it starts at 100% Okay. Okay. This is box and uh, whiskers plot, which you already looked at. We we are showing box and whiskers plots for five different categories, and uh, we see a trend in that, and we also plotted a trend line. So I'll skip that. You have already seen it. This is a variant variation on box and whiskers plot. This is called a violin plot, which shows you the complete distribution. So let's say you are looking at how much was the bill. Uh, of a meal at a particular restaurant on thursday friday saturday and sunday so you have thursday friday saturday and sunday on x axis and you can assume that there is a distribution of the bill okay so the distribution is this is rotated 90 degrees actually your distribution would look like this right but i am rotating it 90 degrees so it is looking like this the green curve so the green curve is 90 degree rotated distribution of the bill below zero let's assume that they took too many discounts some coupons so it became below zero or uh, they they won some uh, gift from the restaurant or something uh, so here what you are seeing is that the complete distribution is being shown here uh, in the green curve now you can actually show it for two different uh, uh, cuts one for males one for females so you can show the other distribution on the other side of the vertical line and that would be the uh, the brown curve that you see right so that is the distribution of how much women spend on uh, on thursday evening inside what you see is a black line and the black line is nothing but a box and whisker plot which so you, box and whisker plot is basically a slice of the entire distribution so this is the violin plot is the entire distribution rotated by 90 degrees and you are showing basically eight different distributions here and uh, inside you can also show the box and whiskers plot questions can you explain the median distance criteria and distance ratio of turtles i think i will skip that that is uh, something that was from our paper uh, uh, we we found some we proposed some metrics to find whether a cancer is genomically pure or genomically heterogeneous so those median distance criteria is nothing to do with general data science it is some particular metric that we proposed 
are outliers contained in the violent plot so outliers are the tail end of the violent plot so here this particular point is an outlier this particular point wherever the violin ends so look at how deep this is so and it is how thin it is so this must be the outlier okay someone raise their hand can you ask your question sir how can we read a violin plot so violin plot just tells you where the mode is right it uh, it tells you uh, where the extreme point is it tells you but it doesn't tell you where the mean or, or the median is that's why you have the box and whisker plot also inside it tanish yes sir in the violin plot some outlier below zero so what does it signify uh, yeah so i don't know what it signifies in this particular case it could be that they were given some uh, uh, coupons for uh, they were on some like raffle or something so the total bill was negative or they complained about the food being dirty so got a cash back or something okay now okay. let's look at another advanced type of graph oh sorry there are four more chat questions let's quickly look at it uh what is the question uh does the bulge what does the bulge depict bulge depicts the mode which is the highest most frequent value uh, so for example in the normal distribution the the mode is also the mean uh, so it is not the mean it is the mode the bulge is the mode mode means most probable okay so how do violent plots tell where the mode is mode is where the top of the bulge is so let's go back so this value is the mode for males this value is the mode for females this value is the mode for males this value is the mode for females so females tend to spend more on friday nights men tend to spend more on thursday nights uh this is the mode for males this is the mode for females etc okay someone had a question who raised your hand please ask your question uh, uh, sir i have a question uh, for the spider plot right Uh, there is one assumption that all the metrics that are being compared right those need to be in the in a in a similar range right 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 let's come to that yeah sure so the next uh, plot i will talk about ram mohan you have a question yes sir in the previous in the previous one uh, right sir um, i understand how we can uh, like compare male with female in one uh, in one distribution but how do we compare different distributions like what we can infer about different distributions from these kinds of graphs for example people tend to spend less on friday and more on saturday something along those lines right can we make a combined assumption that people spend more on fridays and compared to thursdays more on fridays yeah you could if you combine but then you would have to combine the two distributions you can see that the area is more on friday right so the restaurant does more business on friday than on thursday for sure yeah. okay sir sir please tell about box and whiskers plot so that uh, box and whiskers plot we uh, covered in the last lecture basically it's a let me quickly cover it uh, so if i go back to a clearer example Uh, so this uh, central line tells you either the mean or the median depending on how you do it so let's say this is the median the upper line will tell you the 25th percentile uh, sorry 75th percentile lower line will tell you 25th percentile and these tell you the uh, the extreme ends and then let's say one or two points are let out of even the extreme ends the outliers they will be shown as these particular dots okay so neeraj you have a question yeah sir uh, so i wanted to know like suppose uh, we have this dot describe function in python right yeah. so this uh, this box plot is almost just like that right this uh, dot describe it gives yeah in some are... sense yeah and so, you can so directly how... oh, go ahead yeah so uh, so uh, how can we use it uh, for our data set like you know i mean if you can give some uh, business scenario and then you can uh, let us know that a, a box plot we can use it there yeah so so the box plot the way it is used is look at the extreme one on the right 
and look at the extreme one on the left. What this tells me is that the 25th percentile of this is higher than the 75th percentile of this. So clearly there's a difference between the distribution of patients that have uh, only one subclonal mutation versus those who, that have five subclonal mutations. That's what I can infer, right? So okay. usually you want to see that these boxes, like one is completely outside the range of the other. That's a very strong conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's move on. So here, let's say we want to compare feedback, uh, student feedback for uh, four different teachers. Uh, on five different metrics, which is punctuality, clarity, energy, insight, and assignments. Okay, And I can show it in two different ways in bar graphs. Both are very messy, right? It's very difficult to find who's the overall good teacher, who's uh, which teacher. I mean, it's you have to strain yourself a lot to either read the one on the left or read the one on the right. So the one on the left, the x-axis is the... Uh, the quality that was compared in the other one, it is the teacher that was compared and the quality is in the bars. So here the teachers are in the bar colors. Here you have quality in the bar colors, right? So both are very difficult, but the good thing is that, that all qualities are on the same scale, zero to five. Okay. Some people raise their hand. Uh, Neeraj. Uh, still I'm confused in this. Can you just explain it again, sir? Which one? Uh, this this one. Uh, this chart. Okay. I mean. Okay, I'll I'll explain. Kasina. Yes, sir. So, in, uh, what is the difference between a spider chart and a group bar chart? Yeah, I'll I'll come to that. I have I haven't shown the spider chart yet. Ashish. Uh, uh sir, I had a like uh, probably in this case even the assumption is that. They should be in the similar range, but if still they are in a different range, and if they we kind of normalize every of the metric, then still they can be uh, put it in uh, in this context, right? Like in order to yes, do that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I'll explain that. Huh? So here, what I'm showing is that let's say I'm looking at punctuality, right? In the left graph, punctuality blue color is Yudhishthir, is uh, most punctual. Then uh, the next one is Arjun. Then it is Bhim. Then it is Nakul. Right, and then clarity again. Yudhishthir is pretty high, but his clarity is not as high as his punctuality, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that is the same information I can show on the right side, where I group all five qualities as different colored bars and show it by not by quality but by teacher. So here, teacher, I show all ratings. Here, I show all ratings of Bhim. Here, all ratings of Arjun. All ratings of Nakul. Okay. So, but this is not very clear. Now let me show you the spider chart and then you will see how it different it is. So now this is spider chart where from the, the center is zero and the extreme value is five. Okay. So zero, one, two, three, four, five linear scale. So this is clarity, different colors are different teachers. This is energy, different colors are different teachers. This is insight, different colors are different teachers assignments and punctuality. And I have also made blue slightly bolder than the other three because I want to make a statement about one particular teacher. Yudhishthir is the overall best teacher because his pentagon or whatever, if it was six qualities, it would be hexagon. His pentagon is usually outside on all five corners. Okay, except for let's say inside, it is towards the outside for all five corners. So it's the best overall teacher. And the information just pops out and it is very clear to see compared to the, the messy bars that I showed earlier. And now you can also see which is the greatest insight, which teacher gives you the greatest insight. Very easy to see, which is the green one, which is Nakul, okay, and so forth. So here, this works if you can put multiple metrics on the same scale either you normalize them or they are already on the same scale and then you can show it as a radar plot or a spider chart questions can you normalize or standardize values before the spider chart yes can we put index to get clear info yes we can put index also uh, is it more is it more like the area of the pentagon you can interpret that but i i wouldn't make that strict of an assumption but let's say the area is definitely a better indicator can the best person overall be judged 
from the area here. Yeah. So that's the same question, similar question. Yeah, so area would be a good method. Someone raise their hand. What's your question? No hands, okay, all right. Let's look at another type of graph. Waterfall chart. So it's like a bar graph, but you are showing additions and subtractions, right? So let's say this is a company. This is their product revenue, then services revenue. When you add these two, that gives you why we have added on top of this and the number. So now the, this gives you the height, gives you the total revenue, which is around 560, above 560, let's say $650,000, right? So you are showing that this is the product revenue on top of that they get service revenue. So it's a very good visual to show the comparison. And then what we see is that the total revenue as this horizontal line. Okay. Then there are some costs that they have fixed cost, variable cost, and this is the total profit. Okay. So it's called a waterfall chart. Then there is something called a Gantt chart. I think this is probably the last one of the whole lot. Here we are showing timeline. So let's say it is very good for project planning for different phases of the project. So let's say this entire thing up to here is phase one. This entire thing is up to phase two. And what you do is on X axis, you will have time, weeks, months, days, something like that. And the bar will show how long that particular phase of the project will last. And then you will show the next bar when the next part, phase will start and when it will end and so forth. And this is how much uh, the sub phase of that particular phase is, right? And then you can show a vertical line for where we are today. And then there are more advanced things that you can show that you can show dependencies that these two have to start together. This has to finish to, for this to start. So if this gets extended, then this will also be get extended and so forth. So those are more advanced techniques. The simple technique is you just show horizontal bars that cover the time that each phase of the project will take. More advanced things uh, here, we are showing pairwise comparisons of females and males, how much salary they earn for each profession. What this shows is that there is a gender pay gap that for the same profession, women are paid less because you can see always the purple dot is on the left side of the green dot. Uh, then you can use dual histograms. Uh, this is usually used for population uh, histograms. We show males on one side. So this is uh, males, uh, scale number of males at each age group. And this is number of females. So this tells you, for example, in US, the population is quite old. In India, the bulge will be around here because India has a young population. Okay. Uh, heat maps were already covered. You are looking at two different variables and their correlations. And uh, some colors represent high correlation, some colors represent low correlation. Uh, what you see on top here is something called a dendrogram. It shows hierarchical clustering. It is a clearer example on the next slide. So let's say you are trying to see how far are different uh, data points from each other. And the two data points become one data point, one cluster. Uh, at a particular height, at a particular distance, then you will treat them as the same and so forth. So when you look at uh, clustering of different uh, samples, sometimes what happens is that uh, you don't, uh, some techniques require you to tell you what is the optimal number of clusters, or what is the number of clusters you want beforehand. Some want to tell you what is the distance between clusters that you want. Suppose you can't decide between either of the two, you will do something called hierarchical clustering which is represented as a tree like this, which is called dendrogram, where the height tells you the distance between clusters. And then you can see that wherever the height is very large, that's where you can cut to get different clusters. So here there's a blue cluster, there's a yellow cluster, there's a gray cluster and a red cluster. Let's look at if there are chats. Mm. Can the best person overall be judged by the area? Okay, this is this is also okay. Uh, use timeline for your project for your deadline, etc. Right? Yeah, so that is for the Gantt chart. Uh, so I don't have time to cover all types of uh, different graphs, but this should just open you up to like different ways of displaying information and look out for that when you read some marketing article, some uh, uh, development.
development uh, economics article some scientific article you should be able to see how they represented the information and how obvious it was to you because they use a particular data massaging to show you that so here is an example of a cancer slide so this is what you would see in a microscope i want to show where my neural network detects cancer hotspots so i use something called an overlay which is a heat map and this heat map shows you that this area is where the worst cancer is this is where the not so bad cancer is the blue is not so bad cancer the red is uh, the worst cancer uh, then there are tools that are available to reduce very high dimensional data to two or three dimensional so that you can see it very quickly it's called a tsne the tsne is the most popular of them please take a look at it it's very fascinating you can see the digit 0 to 9 for example the handwritten digit data set mnist you can see when you uh, extract features using a using a neural network then on tsne how separate those clusters for different digits are you can even like show different colors you can show even like different digits by their name and so forth all right now we are on the last part and there are only two three slides in this i will basically want to tell you uh, some more tips about what to use when first is uh, sometimes you want to do a data transformation before showing it don't just show dump the data on a graph sometimes you want to change the scale of the data you sometimes you want to do something else for it so for example sometimes you want to show uh, the y axis on on log scale so how many of you are following the covid cases in different countries right so covid being an infectious disease every person capable of infecting eight others and whatever that is will grow exponentially and exponential graphs are very difficult for us to read so if you show it on log scale the y axis is on log scale the time is on linear scale on the x axis then you will see a linear trend and that would mean an exponential rise okay when the order of magnitude is more important then you use a log scale when the actual values for example 5.6 versus 6 is not not that important but 5.6 versus 59 that is more important than you use a log scale uh, sometimes you can show ratio of two variables as opposed to the two variables themselves sometimes you can show them in a polar form when you want to show part of a whole when you want to show many variables or when you want to show cyclical variables such as hour of the day after midnight it becomes one again and so forth days of the week or months of the year or the seasons and so forth questions some examples of dendrogram so that is a that is basically for hierarchical clustering we'll cover it later when we go into clustering in machine learning module uh next look let's look at that so question for you just take a moment and think about how will you improve this graph so you want to see the total number of people by different age groups and you want to see how, how many person how many people are obese in that right so the blue graphs the blue bars show you total number of people red show you the obese people let's see what what you come up with just take a moment and think stacks many people are saying stack 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 good good answer let's look at what i came up with so there is no one right answer okay so look at this it's not only stack but it is also area so i think area looks very pretty because it's almost like a histogram when you look at the age okay and notice one more thing this is very important i used some markers here i used a, a diamond or a rhombus here and i used a circle here any guesses why i used two different markers and not just a red diamond and a red uh, and a blue diamond readability readability is one the other thing is if you print it many times when your client or when your uh, professor prints it they will print it in black and white in monochrome in monochrome the difference between red and blue will not be there okay so you want that difference to be still obvious based on the diamond and the circle okay so many times what you would do is if you have two different lines obviously you will use two different colors for the screen but you will also use two different line styles for the print so one would be a dotted line one would be a solid line for example okay so you can use different markers or different line styles okay another another question so this is an example of uh, diff, uh, we tested some technique that improved uh, the psnr which is the peak signal to noise ratio on images for 50 images so blue is what previously people had done red is what we got okay is there a better way to show this information so obviously the x axis image index 
I use image number one, image number two. There is no order in that. If I swap image number five and image number fifteen, it doesn't make a difference. So this x-axis is is very meaningless in this case. And the series, it should probably not be in series. If it is in series, at least blow up the scale. You don't have to start the axis at zero. You can start it at fifteen to blow up the scale to see the details better. Now, an even better technique would be I actually made some other variables from this. Okay. So the blue ones that I have, those are shown as the blue bars here. The the peak signal to noise ratio of the competitor technique is in the blue bars, and that is on the secondary y-axis. Then I took the ratio of that uh, of our techniques, PS and R, to their techniques, and then I resorted so that it is in a decreasing order. Now this red line is on the on the primary y-axis. Okay. So now it is cl clear that for majority of the image. our psnr is higher than the psnr of the competitor technique okay so psnr ratio is greater than 1 for some images ours is worse than the competitor technique okay so the information just pops out that for majority of the images our technique does better than the competitor technique okay so that's the end of my lecture any questions sujay sir what is the use of learning matplot matplotlib and seaborn tools uh, like the Ty python packages when there are many softwares and other graphical tools available in the market and the internet uh, so sometimes you want to plot multiple of multiple graphs in an automated way so then uh, knowing them to do it programmatically is very good i did not get you so let's say you you ran four different models and you want to plot their metrics using a program you don't want to export the information import it into the software and then plot it so then okay, you so can compatible with the programmers yeah. right right okay. you can you can run it as a script again when to use log when use log when your rise is exponential or the order of magnitude of, of two things being compared is more important than their actual value let's say there is no different so if a country has uh income of uh, income i don't know if that is a good metric uh, but let's just take it for the sake of the argument if a country has uh, average income of uh, per capita income of 70000 versus 72000 that is not important what is important is is it 1000 or 70000 right so order of magnitude is more important so then you would probably use a log scale okay uh can we use scatter plot for the last question uh we could uh, use a scatter plot and then show a vertical and show a 45 degree line and show that for most of the cases our uh, technique uh, lies above the line so that could be one what about the notebook that you shared so the notebook will cover now so okay this is the end of my presentation sujay are you done okay all yes, right sir so Okay, I'll hand it over to Rishav now. How I need to stop stop sharing the screen. How do I say stop share? Okay. can everyone see rich uh, rich of scheme hello okay. yeah hello am i audible yes go ahead yeah so now we will begin the notebook part of this lecture so here we will mostly try to plot different graphs so we will try, we will introduce some different uh, some more different kind of graphs from the earlier lecture so here these are the packages that we will import first of all we will import this so now for uh, plotting a histogram for plotting a bar chart uh, here we have defined a list 
named as height and this is a bar uh, here again this is a tuple a b c d e and we have plotted uh, the bar graph for uh, with the x axis as an index a b c d e, this uh, this tuple values hmm? and the, and the height to be kya yeah? um, hello hmm. yeah so and this plot dot x stick is the for labeling the x axis the value the categories of x axis so on running this we will we should we will get this plot then now if we want a horizontal bar chart then uh, it is same as the column chart and thus the 90 degree version or 90 degree rotated version of previous one so we will follow the same thing just we need to instead of bar plot uh, plot dot bar we can use uh, plt dot bar h and uh, in that manner we can get a column chart now we can as i told in the lecture slides we can use different colors so here this here this is how we can assign color to our bars and uh, this uh, these three value are the value of rgb so any color is uh, made up of three rgb value and 0.6 is the opacity so for example if we if i change this to 0.8 and if we run that so it will change the color a bit so you can play around with this value and get suitable color uh, another way is that you can hard code uh, mention the color for example uh, uh, what should be the color of uh, a b c uh, black blue, red uh, something like that so here you need to pass a list of uh, strings uh, which is made up uh, you you just need to mention the color that you want just be sure that these colors are existing so you have to look at the documentation part for that and here uh, in every time we are just plotting bar graph uh here you can again you can uh use a, another feature edge color uh, and i have set it blue this time so here it is uh, uh a kind of plotting a edge to every bar and x sticks again is just for uh, naming the bar plots uh, for every bar a b c d e now we can add uh, title and axis labels so here again we are using the same bars and height and uh, x and y value um, that the uh, list that we created above and the color value is same this point is for opacity and for uh, plt dot title uh, this is a latex uh, version of uh, entry uh, in which uh, this is for a mathematical formula here it is not uh, needed but uh, for example if you need, uh, have to show x square or something like that then x2 or something then you can use different features like this uh, you need to look into the documentation part for uh, for every formulation and here in this is how you can uh, adjust the size of all the, the x and y axis labels this is to set the limit of we have seen it earlier as well to set the limit of uh, y axis so on running this you can get a graph and here it is uh, a kind of mathematical formula here it's not needed but uh, you can use it now coming on the line chart here we are defining a data frame uh, our self made data frame so year is a year is a column here year t20 and odi as a column and we can simply plot a line chart by plt dot plot and here data is the data frame and we have defined a df as a data frame here uh, so as you can see that uh, the x axis is uh, so our uh, uh, year value are 15 6, 2015 16 17 so with an increment of one year which should be the case but uh, here since the uh, while plotting the graph uh, they the window ki uh, it's uh, the increment should be by one so we need to explicitly mention that so so here we will, we will implement all those things we we will add some other beautification part as well uh, for example here i am changing the line width so line width is basically the thickness of this line uh, then i am explicitly mentioning what should be the increment and uh, the limit of the 
x axis and the font size of uh, font size of uh, x uh, ticks uh, then again the y axis what should be the increment increment tick of 25 so here here this is the list of uh, uh, from 0 25 50 with a 25 increment till 120 till 125 and the point size is again 15 so these are the title x level y level as we sh we have shown you earlier and location so legend uh, log dot center is basically where to locate uh, that uh, notation part which curve is uh, denoting which data and if you want to explicitly write uh, that uh, suppose the red curve is showing t20 score something like that then uh, you need to add uh, here you need to pass a list of strings value for, uh, uh, before this uh, feature uh, before this entry uh, with a comma in between so uh, here the plot dot grid is to as i told that we can include grids for this plot, for this line plot, and uh, that's all for this part. I guess. Uh, now we'll be plotting some random values. So uh, here we are. We have used this uh, np dot random rand to create thousand different numbers, and np dot is uh, just to return the cumulative sum of the elements in a list. So for example, random value can be the random value generated can be positive or negative both so it will just uh, uh, np.confirm is like return a list which will the cumulative sum of uh, all the entries up to that index so we will plot that uh, random values so you can see that every time when you run this uh, cell it will just uh, change the graph because these are the random values yeah so now we are defining an array uh, of a it's uh, uh, it's a two dimensional array and uh, now we are printing if we print the a then uh, it, yeah Rishab, so this is just to show means what comes sum means yeah cumulative sum what is cumulative sum that is just to show we are not going to plot this yeah yeah so this is just to show the output of np dot comes from Now let's switch to different kind of line chart. So here we will use uh, different uh, type of different markers for a line chart. So what would what is the benefit of using a different marker? For example, if we are uh, printing a chart on a black and white paper uh, in a black and white uh, color. So if we have a different color, then also we would not be able to distinguish. So it would be helpful if we have different marker. So here again, I am uh, generating some random, uh, creating some random data frame with some random entries and plotting X and Y values with a different marker for three different columns. Like uh, I am fixing the X axis, X entry to be the same and Y1, Y2, Y3 are different for, uh, as we have defined here. They are defined in a different manner. So there would be different value, different random values. And these are the marker type, marker O, marker, uh, uh, this is the color of a uh, line that you choose. Then this marker face color is these dot points, these dots, exact pl plots. And marker size is uh, what should be the size of this point. And sky blue is the color of uh, that uh, connected line, connected curve. And again, the light width is the thickness of that curve. And uh, the plot dot legend is again, as we shown earlier that uh, it will show the it will show it uh, on the top uh, in the upper center space of the graph so on running this uh, we will get uh, this uh, graph now we'll be plotting scatter plot so here uh, i i don't need don't have to import uh, i don't have to load any data file because uh, we have already um, loaded it into our github repository so we are just we just have to pass the url uh, that is uh, the link for that uh, raw data file again it is a csv format so we are using pd.read csv and uh, here movies is a data frame so 
we can see the first five entry uh, because movies dot had the first five entries. Now we will be using uh, SNS dot regression reg plot function just to plot the scatter plot between two different uh, columns, two different features. So here, uh, as earlier, we shown you that uh, we can use. Uh, matplotlib as well for this but uh, the another feature of sns dot reg plot is uh, it will it will help us to tell a what you can say a regression fit line uh, so here you can see uh, ci is basically confidence interval uh, if we enter the ci value to be equals to none then uh, it will not show any here you can say there is a con you can see the confidence interval is showing in a light blue color um, both have a that, uh, yeah so that is basically the the confidence interval we talked about earlier you see the faint blue above and below the line yeah like a like a cloud above and below the line hmm. so and if we pass it to be none so it will just show the best fit line and if we want to plot without this uh, best fit line, then we need to pass another argument that is fit reg equals false. Then it will show a normal scatter plot. Now we we are uh, loading another data frame. So this is a data frame uh, which comes with C bond library, and. Uh, here, so here we, I have not used any uh, confidence interval. Uh, I have set it to none, so there will not be any confidence interval. In the same way, if uh, I comment it and uncomment this code, so you can now you will see a confidence interval around it. That is around ninety-five percent. So how, uh, now we will look into how just the one, one, one second, go to the yeah. confidence interval. So, so basically what it tells is that there is 95% certainty that the line will be in that light blue region. Okay. Uh, there is only 5% chance that we got this line by mistake and the line should be outside the light blue region. Okay. 95% chance that it should be within the light blue region. And most likely value is the line itself. Most likely value of the line, the slope and intercept of the line is the line itself. Go ahead. Yeah. So this is again, we are plotting a regression plot here. We have changed the marker type. So here we are using a plus sign to marker instead of a, a circular point. Again, since the fit reg is false, so it is not showing the best fit line. Now we can change that color of uh, plots uh, of markers. And uh, now we can set uh, the opacity of uh, these markers. For example, here, here how we can see the, I have set color to red, alpha is for opacity and S is for the size of the marker. So for example, 90, then the marker will be smaller. So now we are plotting a LM plot. So basically it is a scatter plot uh, in which uh, if we want to differentiate uh, uh, every point, we can pass an argument in hue. For example, here I am further bifurcating all the points on the basis of categories of genre. So when we plot this graph, so once first of all, it is a scatter plot between an audience score and critic score but it is further dividing all the points on the basis of categories of genre. So, yeah. So this, uh, yeah, just a second. So, uh, we can see that in this case, we have used SNS dot LM plot for scatter plot. We are using SNS dot res plot. So that is the advantage of using LM plot that here we can add another variable apart from these two variables. So that is basically res plot is a subset of LM plot. Let's yeah. uh, take a few questions, Kasina. Yes, sir. So could you please go to the, uh, go above the scatter plots where we spoke about the line plots more above please. more. Yeah. Here 
uh, instead of you know uh, taking the marker and the color uh, separately uh, we could i saw some other thing also like without defining any of these <clears throat> just in between two quotes we write something like if we want the color to be red and the symbol to be a square and it it is to be connected by a dotted line then we write uh, a dash r and s in the quotes um, for that is there any ordering of that yeah i think the order is fixed uh, we will have to look at the documentation yeah. i know in matlab you can do that very and but it is in a fixed order okay and uh, in that case can i use the same like properties like marker size and all that to uh, adjust the values will all these be the same for them i think you have to look into the documentation part because i am not aware of that method right now manan you had a question is it it is okay all right let's let's move yeah so here we have uh, uh, used another data set the iris data set this is again provided by sns only so here we have used uh, sepal length feature and sepal width feature and fit reg is to avoid any best fit line on this plot so these and are the three different kinds of flowers and these are four four characteristics of those uh, three different types of flowers that we are trying to visualize so we are starting with two different well two different variables of those flowers yeah and uh, so here you can see that uh, it will it is showing a cluster of uh, these so it will help it will be helpful in uh, cluster when we will look into the clustering part like uh, these uh, points are going to form a cluster they have a, a similar kind of feature in comparison to the points lying there so here you can see there are roughly three clusters of uh, denoted by blue orange and green color and this plot dot legend is again to show the you know which curve is denoted by which point and here we are setting it to the lower right part now we will look into uh, last second plot the boylan plot so as we discussed in the slide uh, we can you we can plot directly using sns dot boylan plot and uh, for x and y we first need to define a data frame and uh, just pass the data frame column entries for example here we are uh, here we are assessing the column of uh, column named as species and this is the sepal length so basically species is a categorical variable categorical variable so there are three kinds uh, setosa versi color and virginia virginica and uh, y is the sepal length so it is showing the distribution among distribution of uh, the sepal length so one thing to note here is that uh, here if you look at the blue plot it is symmetric ac across that uh, central line and the same with the orange plot and the green plot that is because we are not further subdividing yeah. uh, we, we are only looking at a, a single uh, distribution not double distributions on each of those three categories like in the example in the slide we had different days but for each day we were all looking at males and females separately here we are not doing that yeah Just here we have not different species, types of flowers that's it hmm. and at last uh, we will plot a density plot using sns.k de plot uh, function and here we are plotting the density for sepal width and sepal length on the same plot and shade true is the to show the to color the area under the curve and this is to for the coloring like to decide the color of the curve so yeah. this uh, type of density plots for each variable is very good to decide when you have let's say 200 variables for each sample and you want to find which 10 variables i should select in a machine learning algorithm to build my classifier so find out those where the classes seem maximally separated where the overlapping area between the red and the blue is very very little compared to what is not overlapping so those are good variables to classify between two different uh, 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 two different uh, classes so here we are actually showing two different variables not two different classes but let's say one was for virginica and what is the other one and we were doing the 
Virginica and uh, Setosa, right? And we were showing just sepal width, but two different distributions, one for Setosa, one for Virginica, and they would turn out to be very different. That means that sepal width is a good uh, variable to keep in your classification algorithm. Okay, so I think I'm done with this notebook. Manan, you have a question? Sir, is density plot and area plot are different or same? So, area plot can be about anything. Uh, density plot uh, is uh, basically, uh, usually density plot is shown using an area plot. Area plot, so here you are showing density, whereas area plot can be about another metric also. It doesn't need to be about density. Just like histogram is uh, shown using a bar plot, but bar plot can also show other metrics other than frequency. Okay. Sujay? Uh, sir, in the last assignment, uh, we had a question like uh, oh, for, for plot a histogram and check whether there is skewness of uh, data or not. So I plotted the histogram alongside I plotted uh, uh, like this uh, the density. Is this what, what, what plot is this? Density plot, yes. Density plot, yeah. Uh, so I plotted uh, on top of the histogram. So I got uh, whether it is skewed or not. Okay. So uh, actually, uh, actually, there is a mathematical definition of skew. You will have to look at the third moment. Yeah, I did some research on skew and uh, I just plotted density pl plot on top of histogram. Great. I mean, I, I was not aware of that method. I would have just computed X minus mu of X uh, whole yeah. cube expected value of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you know whether this approach, approach is right or not? Not sure. I'll, I'll have to read upon it. Okay. Any other questions on today's lecture? Kasina? Uh, Yes, sir. So here uh, is the dense. Uh, can I say the density plot and uh, histogram are essentially the same? Yes. Density is more of a continuous version of histogram. In histogram, you, you actually make bins. In density. Yeah, here we are not making bins. We are just taking a continuous value and splitting it. Uh, huh. Exactly. So usually you put like a kernel on each uh, sample and then you add up all the kernels and you get the density. Plot. Yeah. Okay. Hope uh, this lecture was useful. Uh, thanks, everyone. Yeah, okay. Thank you, everyone. Plots for which most use in the extensively in the industry. There are several. See, every industry has their favorite plots. Marketing has its own favorite plot. Advertising may have a different plot. So the idea was not to give you a complete list of plots. The idea was to expose you to the possibility that there are different ways of showing information, highlighting your message. So showing information and highlighting your message are the key things. So first think through what your message should be. What is it that you want to highlight and how you will highlight it and keep your eyes open when you read the economist, when you read, uh, when you go to gapminder.com, when you, you know, when you are reading scientific publications, what are good? So, for example, survival plots, you will not see so much in engineering, more in. So, there are different, uh, uh, different plots are, uh, uh, you know, they are used in different industries. So, research. Manoj, you have a question? Sir, uh, uh, sir, uh, in violin plot, uh, can we draw a one sided graph? One sided. Uh, I mean, theoretically, you can you can give dummy zero values to the other side, right? But uh, it's yeah, yeah, we can draw. I think uh, there is, there are it. methods. Yeah, uh, like you need to look at the documentation part, but I have seen it. Uh, Sophia Parker, uh, histogram is a visualization of frequency, right? Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay, so I can I think we have answered most of the questions. Sir, where, where can we find the path of this uh, collab file? I yeah, show the folder, right? And then uh, I think we will uh, everything will be available just like we are we are making it available for the previous lectures also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh? Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.